If you've been around a farm much or if you've ever raised chickens before, you've probably seen one of these heat lamps. They're cheap and you know what? They work, they keep stuff warm. Something you may not have seen before though are these heating plates which are specifically designed for baby chickens. They get hot on the bottom and they mimic a mother hen's um, ability, I guess you'd call it, to heat from above. But how do they really work? Do they work as good as a heat lamp or is this the best solution? We're going to tell you about our experiences here on our farm. Well, we've got some meat chickens. Not that one. <laughs> we've got some meat chickens in the brooder. Let's go check them out first. Howdy folks, my name's Reagan, and this is the second time we are raising meat chickens here on our homestead. Now we love to raise as much of our own meat as possible, and we love chicken. And so what we're doing is we're taking you week by week. We have Corners Cross chickens, they take eight weeks to grow. Eight weeks of raising meat chickens, how things have changed and what, what we're doing different from week to week to week, and some things that we did last year, and then some things that we're seeing this year, and just trying to pass some of that knowledge on to you. And I forgot to mention it in last week's video, but in week eight, we're going to be doing a complete cost breakdown of these birds. What it took to buy them, what it took to raise them, equipment that we had to buy. I'm kind of a math geek, so if that's you too, we should be friends. But we're gonna have all of that information when the time comes, when the process is finally finished. Now you can see behind me, that's a different style of heat lamp than this one that I showed you earlier. This is a really cheap one you can buy at pretty much any value store nearby. That one we ordered from Premier One Supplies and we do prefer those heat lamps over these, you know, cheaper style. These can get really hot. Heat lamps can cause barn, barn fires, but the Premier One, even though it is a steeper cost to purchase it, they are a lot better. They don't get nearly as hot and they work really, really well. They hold up and you can buy replacement parts for them if something fails. And we've had to do that in the past where things need to be resoldered or a new cap or a new um, shield, whatever thing that goes there. You can buy all those. If you're gonna buy a heat lamp and you really think you're gonna be doing this a lot, whether you raise chickens, whether you raise birds, whether you just have a need for a heat lamp in your barn periodically, we do prefer that style over that one. And you see, that's just a little LED light in there. This thing is pretty much good only for light. That's, that's its purpose here on the farm. Now we've got two styles of heat plates. This is one that they say is good for 30 birds. And then we've also got a 50 bird uh, plate that's in there currently. Now, do we like them? Do they work? Well, in theory, I think they work great. The heat lamps, they use a lot of power. That's a 250 watt bulb in that heat lamp. And so whenever those things are plugged in, that power bill, the meter is just running and running and running. Now these only use like nine watts or something. It's a lot, it's a lot less. And so they don't get, they don't use nearly as much energy and they get warm enough. So whenever these are sitting up in the, uh, in the brooder with the chicks, they can go in under, they get warm, they come back out. And in theory, I like them a lot, but they're not perfect. One thing we always try to be here on our home set and in our videos is transparent. When things go good, we want to tell you, but things also go bad and they go bad on a farm more often than maybe, than maybe what we'd like. We have lost, well, we started off with 50 birds and we're down to, by my best count, I got a bunch of little yellow things running around. We have 38 now. We lost, I want to say, well, I think they gave us a few extra. We lost about 12 in the first four to five days and we lost a couple more larger birds earlier this week. Now, some of that, I kind of think, I don't want to blame the hatchery. I'm not going to mention them on camera here, but I kind of think some of the stock is not perfect. And I'm not sure of that. That's why I'm not mentioning it, but I kind of think that might be part of the problem. Some of what we're running into though, I think, now none of them were dead on arrival. We had one die pretty soon after. I think it just happened. I'm not going to blame that on anything, maybe other than just shipment and, and whatever. Some of what I'm running into and thinking is our heat plate, and this is for Cornish Cross chickens, which if you raised them before, or if you're thought, thinking about raising them, they are specifically bred to turn uh, food into meat. They eat a lot and they grow quickly, eight weeks from hatch until slaughter. I think a, I think a board or something just dropped in the stall next to me because that sounded like a gunshot. All right, well, farm life. Um, and so with that in mind, that these birds grow quick, they're made to do one thing and do one thing really well. They're not very bright. That, I know what that was. All right, that wasn't a board. I figured out what it was because the scent is getting to me. We had a chicken get on top of our, above our feed room. We have a loft in there and lay some eggs. That's an old egg that I meant to get rid of yesterday. And the scent is overpowering. <coughs> oh goodness. All right, anyway, <laughs> the uh, meat birds turn food into uh, 
turn food into meat. They grow quick. They're perfect for that. But they're not very bright. They're not very uh, sturdy, and they're not especially hardy. Something I think we're running into with that heat plate is they get underneath it, and they get warm, and if they get huddled in too close, there's not much you can do to get them out of there short of picking that up and kind of roughing them around in there and making them leave the area. So what does that mean? Well, if they get in there and they get too hot and they get crowded in, the ones that can't get out and move around, I think they just die. And so with that, it kind of seems like these birds don't have enough sense to just get away from the heat, get out, walk around for a minute, and then go back in. Now, part of that is because they're all in a big pile and a big huddle. I don't really know. But in our experience so far, we've done this twice now, we've used the heat plate twice. I'm not totally sure it's the best choice for meat birds. That doesn't mean it won't work for you and I'm not knocking the product because I really like the product. I think it's a great idea. And again, it uses less energy so the power bill doesn't just keep climbing and climbing and climbing whenever you're raising birds because that does factor into the total cost, right? But in our experience for the meat birds, for the Cornish Cross meat birds, we've never tried to do anything else, never tried any of the Red Rangers or anything, whatever. The heat plate may not be the best choice. So now what? Well, what we've done is experiment a little bit with one heat plate, one heat lamp, and we're just mixing and matching. We're unplugging it right now. You can see I've got one heat plate that's just completely unplugged, propped up against the wall. Tonight, when the temperature cools back down, it's like 60 degrees outside right now. So whenever the temperature drops back down a little bit later, we'll plug it in. It takes about an hour or so to heat up, and then they can come and go in as they want. But right now, they're just up. They're moving around. They're doing what chickens do. They're doing especially what these chickens do, which is eat, drink, and poop, and then they just get in a big huddle and do their thing. If you have a different experience with using a heat plate or if you have any tips, drop them down in the comments because I love hearing, seeing different opinions. You know, my opinion, what I what I have here on our farm, our experience is going to be different than yours or it may be different, I don't know. But if you have something different, different point of view, let me hear about it. One thing we want to do in this Raising Meat Birds video series is get a weight from week to week to week, kind of a three bird average. We'll weigh three birds and uh, put the average. Last week we did it, uh, the numbers are down in the description, and then this week we're going to do those here in just a moment where we, if you've never raised Cornish Cross chickens, they grow so quickly and it is amazing how they will just, I mean it looks like they've doubled in size in a week, which is insane, but the numbers will tell the tale, so we'll do that here in just a second. Well, all right, hold tight. 8.6 ounces. Ten ounces. We're going to say nine point seven. Next week, as these birds continue to grow, we're going to expand their room in the brooder. Right now, it's kind of divided in half of the board. Probably next week, we're going to remove that divider and just put some more shavings down, uh, clean out the messy stuff because they make a big mess. We're going to clean that stuff out, give them some fresh bedding. And then in another couple of weeks, uh, one or two weeks, hopefully the weather and uh, time cooperate here with me, we're going to be building some new chicken tractors. I'm going to be building two new Chickastoga style and if you've never seen that then I'm excited to show you because I have a vision in my mind I've seen it before and I'm excited to get those built if that's something you're interested in seeing be sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll have the whole playlist linked right here for you to watch thanks for being here my name's Reagan this is the GWP homestead we'll see y'all soon oh yeah I gotta take some rotten eggs out